Hey friends, it's Lindsay Stitches. Welcome to my channel. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who watched my first video and to everybody who subscribed to my channel over the last month or so. I'm really excited to keep stitching my way through 2022 with you all, especially those of you who have decided to start your own embroidery journal after watching my video. In this video, I will be telling you my process for deciding what to stitch on my embroidery journal every day, as well as how I turn a memory or an experience into a tiny little thing that I can stitch. Then I'll be giving you an update on my 2022 embroidery journal so far. So I'll be giving you some of my favorite memories from January and February with stories behind some of the things that I've stitched. So one of the hardest parts of doing an embroidery journal for me is actually thinking of something to add to it every single day. If you're worried that you don't have something exciting enough or significant enough to add to your journal, then don't worry because so am I. Monotonous and uneventful days are just a part of life, but I think that including all the boring stuff on your embroidery journal makes it more relatable for other people who are looking at it. A little while ago, I listened to an episode of the Smartless podcast where they were interviewing Jerry Seinfeld. And in it, Jerry was talking about how hard it is to get his kids to engage in conversation at the dinner table. Because of that, he decided to make a rule so that everybody who comes to dinner has to come prepared with an anecdote to share with the family while they eat. Since I listened to that, I kind of started thinking about my embroidery journal in the same way. So now I just write down anything that is cute or funny or unusual that I see when I'm like, on the train or at work or at the supermarket or anywhere and I think what would I tell Jerry Seinfeld about my day? So there was one day back in 2020 when I was doing my first embroidery journal. Um, I just had a day at home. I was doing some uni work and some housework um, so it was pretty boring but I did a load of washing and when I pulled the load of washing out of the washing machine and hung it up I realized that the entire load of washing was basically made up of pink t-shirts. I didn't do this consciously because I'm definitely not somebody who separates my lights and darks and colors in my washing. It just so happened that I had been pretty much exclusively wearing pink t-shirts that week and I just thought it was a cute thing that I noticed um, out of doing a boring household chore. So for that day I stitched a pink t-shirt. I'm not saying that this is the story I'm going to tell Jerry Seinfeld if I go there for dinner. I just think it's a good memory to explain that sometimes I choose what I stitch by picking something small and fun out of a boring daily task. Another hard part about doing an embroidery journal is trying to figure out how to translate a memory or an anecdote into a tiny little picture that fits into the space of about 15 square millimeters. Some of the memories that I've chosen to stitch on my embroidery journal have a super obvious picture that goes along with them. So like in January, I bought a bunch of flowers from the Frio Farmer's Market. So I stitched a little pink flower using a Lazy Daisy stitch. And in February, I watched the sunset at Preverly Beach in Margaret River. So I stitched a sunset, but for other memories, I have to think outside the box a little bit or go a bit abstract to think of something that can represent them. One example of that is this little cactus that I stitched in February. That one actually represents going to a chromatical club goal setting workshop in, uh, via Zoom. So the host of that workshop was Sarah Kenyon, who is also known as Sheriff K. She is a creative business coach whose entire brand is based around a Western theme. So I just thought that a cactus was the perfect thing to represent her. Basically the way that I choose an icon to represent something is by breaking the experience down into its parts and figuring out what it is that reminds me of that particular memory. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. I think that half the fun of sharing your embroidery journal with others is letting them interpret each image and what they might mean. Now time for some of my stories from January and February of 2022. So on the first day of January, Josh and Mosby and I went to Little Loaf Bakery in Fremantle for coffee and a cinnamon scroll. So for that, I stitched their hot bread logo. On the 4th of January, I stitched a tiny version of my 2021 embroidery project because I finally got it finished. If you didn't know about this one already, my 2021 embroidery project was to do a Lindsay Stitches version of a phonology wheel. 
So each month I designed a repeated pattern that was inspired by something that happens in nature in Australia during that month. First I stitched each of those patterns into a segment of this hoop. So it goes from January there all the way around to December. As well as doing it on this hoop, I stitched each pattern onto its own individual hoop so they all go together. I also sell these designs as kits and digital patterns over on my website. So I'll add the link in the description if you want to stitch one yourself. On the 13th of January, I started designing and planning an embroidery sampler for complete beginners. Uh, it's inspired by Cradle Mountain in Tasmania, so I stitched a tiny little version of Cradle Mountain. So my partner Josh and I keep up with a lot of Australian YouTube like travel channels. So we were super excited on the 21st of January when we saw some people that we watch. They're called The Outfit. They drive a converted uh, Unimog. Uh, we saw them in our suburb, so I decided to stitch their Unimog on there. On the 27th of January, Josh and I were at the supermarket in the bakery section and there was a little girl there who was asking her mum if she could get a baguette um, and her mum told her no because white bread is the devil. So for that day, I decided to stitch a baguette with some little devil horns and a devil tail. Um, my favorite part about that is that it fit, um, there was the perfect spot for it next to the hot bread logo. So it just, they were just meant to be together. On the 11th of January, Josh and I were heading into Fremantle to go out for dinner. Um, when we were on our way, we stopped at an intersection because the light was red and there were a heap of boxes in the intersection. We didn't know what was in them, so, and they were kind of in the way, there was no way of us being able to get around them. So I decided to get out of the car and move them to a safer place so that we could actually, we and everybody else at the intersection could get through without hitting them. I felt really silly being the person to get out in the intersection and move all the boxes out of the way, but it did give me something funny to add to my journal. So I stitched a traffic light with the little boxes next to it for that day. So my favorite artist, Lisa Congdon, actually makes two appearances in February. On the 14th, I started listening to her podcast, which is called The Lisa Congdon Sessions. For that, I stitched the logo of the podcast, which is a little matchbox. I relate really strongly to everything that Lisa talks about and every single episode has just blown my mind. So if you're a creative person, I would definitely recommend listening to it. And the second time that Lisa pops up on here is when I received her book that I ordered. It's called Find Your Artistic Voice. So for that, I stitched a little mouth. The reason I chose to stitch a mouth is because I think it relates to the title of the book, but also there was a picture, an illustration that Lisa had done in the book of a little mouth. And so that was kind of the inspiration for that. So I'm trying to do a few more detailed pictures on my embroidery journal this year, rather than just going for the easiest option to illustrate a memory. My two favorite motifs this month are both things that I was worried would be too tricky to do in a small space, but I'm actually really proud of how they turned out. First, Firstly, there is the tree that I stitched to represent my visit to the Boronup Carry Forest down in the southwest of WA. So after bushfires in Boronup in December last year, the forest is looking a lot different than it was last time I went there. But I loved going there and seeing all the new growth coming through only a couple of months later. So what I stitched was a tree with a bunch of little green shoots coming off it. My other favorite picture from February is actually the Kelpie here. Uh, which represents watching Mustard Dogs on ABC. I think his eyes make him look a little bit crazy, but I think that that kind of captures the essence of some of the dogs on the show. Alrighty, that's it for the first monthly update on my 2022 embroidery journal. If you have any questions or you want any more of my tips and tricks on doing an embroidery journal, then leave them in the comments and I'll try to cover them in my next update. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.